Hi. This is a video about how to make gears with a simple brush and polar coordinates. It's pretty easy and works quite well, I think. You'll have to decide that for yourself. Anyway, this is part two. Uh, we left off last time pretty much around there. Okay. So, we'll just shut this guy off and we'll show you how to do infills. That's the brush you made. Okay, so brush, doesn't matter what color, standard size. I'm going to zoom out a little bit just so I can see. I'm going to go, I don't know, in the middle somewhere. Something like that. Okay, that's the brush. You've already seen it get turned around. Here is another brush, which you can actually make quite easily, by the way. Anything you make here and go copy will show up as the very first thing here. Maybe you can use it as a temporary brush. So this was just a 100 pixel by whatever uh, rectangular selection tool. Okay, so I changed it down there and put a few vacant holes in it. Okay, as long as it's it's the same deal, it's got to go across the layer equally if you've got holes in it. Otherwise, it's going to look funny. Try it out, you'll figure it out yourself. Okay. So there, click, shift, control, wave you go across. Doesn't look like much. Okay, so filters and distortions and polar coordinates. Okay, now because it was a continuation map the top is off. Okay. That's it. That's simple. That's one infill. It's a simple infill. It works. You can put gradients on it. You can do whatever you want. I would suggest though if you want to get, you know, something like this type of thing. Uh this was done on two get that off of there. This was done on two layers. So in other words, that was one layer, that was the other layer. They're both turned independently by the way, and you can then play with them and then combine. Them. Okay? It's that simple. There's one. I'll show you a simple way to back the brush, wrong brush. I'll show you the V brush. Okay. That's one I showed you in the last tutorial. It's been scaled to 25 wide, but it's the same height, 150. So we're on that layer there. Okay. Click shift control. Okay. Uh, once in a blue moon and Depends. I got a 64-bit machine, or it could be I just told you my mouse wrong, or it could be a fault of GIMP. I don't know. Uh, you will get anti-aliasing lines, or you may get anti-aliasing lines through here. Uh, they're easy to get rid of, and I'll show you in a second how you get rid of. Them. And you can actually use them to your advantage sometimes. Different designs. Okay. Get out there. Rectangular selection tool. We'll go down here. Bucket fill tool. Fill it in. Selection none. Okay, zoom in a little bit. Filters, and since I've already used it, repeat polar coordinates. Okay, there you go. Alpha to selection. Am I on the right one? No, nope. cool. Here, alpha to selection. And since I don't like the lines, I'm going to fill them in. But you do have to click quite a few times. Okay, when, a few more than when you think you've got rid of them. Okay, so selection is none. Here's a simple infill. There you go. And do it quick so it doesn't work out. Please bear with me. Okay, so brush. We'll just turn it back to whatever. It's just a round brush. Okay. May not be perfect, but you get the idea. Okay. Pretty simple. Gives you lines. You can do whatever you want. And so you've turned two and now it's straight. You can play with these. Okay. We'll give you one more option here. Just to show you what you can kind of do. So brush. Okay. The brush you guys made, which is the 5150. Back out so you can actually see the edges. Turn it the way it's supposed to be. Yeah, we'll go up here. I'm going to do this all in one layer, uh, but I would suggest you do it on like two, three, however, however many images you want to put on here. So, made another brush which actually came from the same template as the brushes were made from. Okay, it's 100 pixels wide, but 300 pixels high. It does work out across. Okay, except I'm going to change this to 200. Okay.
and hit enter. And if you want to figure out stuff, change the spacing here. You'll figure out when you stretch it across, it's going to double up and it may look funny. So, something to keep in mind. Okay, there it is. It's off the edge, but it's, once you turn around, it's still got enough there, and that's the edge there. Okay. Rectangular selection tool. I'll just make a hub at the bottom. Move it up a little bit there. Fill it in. Selection. Done. Okay. You can put gradients, fills, patterns, whatever you want. I mean, it's entirely up to you. For this one, we'll just do this. Take a gradient of, well, I don't know, something that's going to show up, have decent. Here we go. Golden. Okay. So we're going to put linear, and we'll put a repeat on it. And I would use control because you get a lot of bumps and they're crooked. They're going to show weird. Uh, there's an idea. So there's selection, none. Uh, it may be hard to visualize if you're not used to it. This probably won't look all that bad when it's turned. So filters and repeat color, polar coordinates, sorry. And here we come. Now, as you noticed, it used to be quite narrow here. Okay, but it's kind of almost equaled itself out. It's still a little round. Okay. I still got a bit of a curve. Uh, that kind of can't be avoided. Right? And it also depends on where you are on the layer as to what this is going to do. So play around with it. It's still kind of unremarkable. We'll give it a little bit of something. Here, light and shadow and drop shadow. And we'll keep it at default. Okay? And there you go. Got a gear that's got you know, a little bit of character to it. Uh, the other way to do this is you can do it after. Okay? So, except this time we're going to turn it to radial. Since it's round, try to keep it in the middle. We'll pull it. I'm not going to screw around. It just gives you an idea. Plus, my mouse is starting to screw up here. Selection, none. Okay? There's another way of doing it. That probably doesn't look quite as good. But you get the idea. Okay. And last but not least, once you've actually made brushes out of all that stuff, I'm just this one actually is pretty horrible, but it'll give you an idea of what you can do. So that's the brush. Pretty much what you just looked at. Okay, it's a bad gradient for this. That's kind of the intention. I'm gonna leave it at three hundred. Change your aspect ratio. I think it only goes to 20, but we'll keep it around, I don't know, somewhere around 5 or 6. Okay? So it changes, slants. Click and shift, and there you've got a full 3D gear. Okay? And like I said, it's a horrible gradient, but whatever. Uh, I'll grab another one, and I'm going to show you what the problems can be. Okay? And you can change your angle. I'll change it like this. So you get an eye, another idea. Okay. So get that off the screen. Zoom in, and I'll show you what can happen. By the way, uh, you should be at one to do this. Otherwise, you're going to wind up. They're not going to stack on top of each other. Uh, you can wind up with this type of affair. There's a lot of lines. It's hard to get rid of. It depends on the gradient you're using. Okay. Because if you can see here and here, they're different. So the angle, the gradient you use, and everything else. Small holes may not show up. Etc. Etc. You can fix this up a little bit. We'll go blur, Gaussian blur. I'm not even going to try and find it. There we go. Turn, turn it down to three. Okay. It's blurred it out a little bit. Most of it's gone. You could probably get away with maybe two. Looks a little more appealing. And distance will also help. Okay. Hopefully, this is showing you enough to get you going. Have fun.